Camelot 31 here. And will it, will it ever end? Will my pain and suffering ever cease until I cease to exist? <laughs> Probably not. But what I can do with this pain and the suffering that's been tormenting me for years is I can share it with you and make you feel slightly as tormented as I feel on a daily basis. So we got a ton of messages, son, to go through today. These are going to change your life. And for the better? No. For the worst? Yes. M definitely. Depending on who you are. So get ready. Because this nightmare is about to begin. And you're living it, son. Right now. So before we get into it, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, doodle. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't, damn it. First message, Camelot. I'm a huge fan. I'm a manager at Target, and I had someone above me that was insane. Shocking. Story of my damn life. My first week there, I was in the break room eating lunch, and my boss came into the break room and dumped a giant mountain of trash on, on the table I was eating on and said that I needed to do my job. She then stormed out. She later told me it was to remind me that clearing the trash was part of my job description, which it isn't. We have maintenance that does that. I argued that, and she said that in her store, it was whoever's job she decided it was. God. I just told her no thanks, because I don't play that dumb shit. She then, for the next year, made my life a living hell, until she was fired for slapping an associate in the face that apparently talked back to her. I still work there, and it's an awesome job now since she's gone. She going around slapping people in the damn face which I'm quite, uh, quite sure is illegal. But a lot of jobs can actually be terrible because of one person. I've experienced this several times. You know for damn sure. Egg. Next message. I worked at GameStop for about a year, and your content has changed my life. Never have I heard someone so accurately depict the company. When I worked there, my store manager told me to never think, just do. That was his saying, don't think, just do. With everything task, marketing, or even numbers. Don't think, just do. He told me to just add GPGs onto transactions and throw cards and reserves onto kids' transactions. If I had any objection, he would again just say, don't think, <laughs> just do, like a damn cult, son. The store ranked well, and pretty much everyone did that. If you refused, you were fired. There were like four businesses in my city, so I thought I had won the lottery getting a job at a place that I absolutely love. So I didn't want to lose the job. Eventually, loss prevention came to our store to investigate our numbers, and every single person got fired for fraudulent numbers and stealing. Except for the store manager. <laughs> what? He claimed that he had no idea it was happening and had no evidence he was doing it because he avoided the register, so his numbers were just average. He still works there. I work at a bank now, which is much more laid back. Thanks for all that you do. <laughs> Shocking. Literally just egg. He would just add stuff on, which is what a lot of GameStop stores do. But I'm going to remember that next time I'm standing on the edge of a cliff. And I'm looking down into the abyss, which is which is my paradise. And I'm I'm just gonna be like, you know what? Just just don't think. Just do. <laughs> It'll be great. Next message. I had a terrible coworker that I worked with when I was a cashier at Walmart. She approached me and asked me to cash out her paycheck. I was still new at the job and never got training on how to do that function. She was sympathetic, so she walked me through how to do it. Transaction over and done. I go on about my day. I get called back a couple of days later by my managers and they circled me in an office and accused me of stealing. After tears, videotapes, and telling them what happened, they told me that apparently this coworker of mine had st stolen not only from me, but several other people that day as well. They just wanted to confirm I wasn't in on the deal. F Walmart and F that lady for almost getting me arrested. <laughs> I remember when I was with Walmart, I remember there was one associate that was literally stealing every damn day. And they, they tried to accuse everyone in the same department of stealing. And it was just her. It was insane as hell. It was like a week long ordeal. Next message. I was a Walmart cashier and some young adults came up. I checked them out. They came back and said I shorted them $20. I said, I don't think I did. My drawers were always balanced to the penny. They insisted I shorted them $20, giving them the benefit of the doubt because sh shit. 
I've been shorted change before, and maybe I really did. I'm not impervious to mistakes. So I called the CSM over, describing the situation, and said I'd like to drop my drawer and have her count it. Now the young adults are all like, it's no big deal. We don't want any trouble or to waste any time. And of course you know the ending. Those two guys are, were working a con on me, or trying to. The CSM counted my drawer and it balanced to the pity. The con men left, and my CSM said I did the right thing. I was right. I didn't shortchange those bastards. That exact same thing happened to me when I was at GameStop several times, but one time in particular, the guy said he handed me a hundred when I gave him change back for a ten. It was like five dollars and change. He said, Oh, I gave you a hundred. And I was like, What? And he was like, Yeah, I gave you a hundred. And I was like, Okay. Now I specifically remember getting a ten dollar bill. I'm not stupid, man. I pay attention to things, all right? And I looked and I was like, all right, I'm gonna count my register. And he was like, okay. And I started counting it and I got halfway done after three minutes of just counting my register. And he said, Ah, oh, never mind, man, and he left. And I'm like, why would you say, oh, never mind, if you just lost ninety five dollars? You wouldn't. He was literally trying to rob me. Right there. And I ain't dumb, son. Even though I'm kinda dumb, son. Next message. There was a literal crackhead I worked with for four months that was also secretly living in a storage room in the back room of my Walmart and being completely nonsensical when he was actually working. <laughs> what? <laughs> he just lived in the back room storage room? No idea how AP didn't see him on camera going in there and never coming out. We found a mattress folded up in a storage room after he was let go and an actual brand new crack pop with a price tag on it to boot. Squirreled away back there. He left discarded food everywhere like pizza crust in the toilet paper holder in the bathroom. <laughs> what? And he even left hair in the sink in the bathroom as he was obviously bathing in there. As you know, we also, we don't have any bathing facility in the store. One day, he said his alarm didn't go off and he'd be in at X time, which kept getting moved back later and later. He eventually showed up at 4.40 p.m. and he got off at 5. <laughs> wow, damn, that's a long shift. See comment above about secretly living in the storage room. I like how he was living there and was like eight hours late. And he was literally like five feet away the whole time. <laughs> There's so much more I can get into. It was a wild four months. That's for sure. That actually count kind of sounds badass. Like living in a Walmart and no one knowing you're there. Kind of feels James Bondy, but in like a hobo, like trailer park kind of way. Like trailer park James Bond. <laughs> I definitely take my SpaghettiOs shaken and not stirred at all. And not even heated up because I'm a freaking redneck, man. Next message. Hired a third key at GameStop on good recommendation. I was the store leader. He was just fine for the first two weeks. Then I noticed money going missing. Then games started going missing. Then a customer told me that he had been charging 30% more on each cash transaction he was doing and keeping the difference. He was changing the price in the computer when he sold something to reflect higher and keeping the extra cash. When I looked at the receipts, I saw that he had been adding 30% more to all cash transactions. I fired him that day. The next day, he came in and apologized. Well, that's sweet of <laughs> Said he was on drugs and was going to rehab. I wished him well. The next day, he tried to break in after close and was caught. <laughs> Why even apologize, man? That sounds like something Egg would do. When Egg would see a game that was on sale for $39.99, but it's usually $59.99, he would just pocket the cash, man, and still charge him $59. All the time. He didn't give a damn. He worked there for 12 years. <laughs> Next message. I worked at a lot of warehouses, but one I worked at was mainly Amazon. They pay you completely shit and work you so hard it tears your body and mind up. One guy I work with was nicknamed Big Matt, since we already had another Matt. Well, Big Matt was a big fan of steroids, so the dude was absolutely jacked. But this 35-year-old still lived with his mom. That's sweet. He said it had to do with him being a kid and walking in on her being attacked. And ever since then, he never wanted to leave her alone. At the time, I thought, wow, that would explain the substance abuse. He just wants to be strong and protect her. Well, I was an idiot. <laughs> two months later, Big Matt and two co-workers just didn't show up. So I asked the supervisor what happened, but he didn't know either. Next day, one of the co-workers came in and told all of us that the three had been arrested because after buying an ounce of weed, Big Matt's mom called the cops on them. So before the cops showed up, Big Matt, a six-foot-some-odd-inch buff roid head, beat his mother to death for calling the cops on him. Wow. Wow, Big Matt. What the hell, son? 
I thought you were wanting to be big and strong and protect her, not be big and strong and, and end her with your fist. Next day, I look up, and sure enough, he was booked in a local prison. Shocking. So Big Matt didn't love his mother at all. He just loved her too much with his fist, I guess. <laughs> Next message. Hey, Kim. I have a McDonald's story. There was this guy named Daniel I used to work with at McDonald's in high school. He let everyone know he worked out and enjoyed being on the football team. He had this thing about taking five shifts a day. He would walk by on his way back from the toilet, chest out, shoulders back, and triumphantly announce, that's shit number three. <laughs> Fucking Daniel. Oh my god. I don't know, man. If you took like five a day, I'd kind of be, I'd kind of be happy about that. I, I would want to tell the whole world. Tell the whole world, man. Next message. Back when I worked at GameStop, I was friends with another part-timer. A chill dude. Right up until the point they made him a manager, and that small amount of power and increase in pressure made him so angry all the time. He screamed at me that I was shit at my job because I didn't do a thing that I was never asked to do before. He made me miss my last bus so I couldn't get home. It was pitch black outside and I cried on the bench outside the store. Worst working day and worst coworker. It took me a long time to get over that and realize I wasn't a shit worker. He was just stressed and didn't know how to handle it, I suppose. Which happens all the time. You'll see one of your coworkers get moved up and they'll turn into a damn psycho. Because they can't handle the pressure and they think being a manager means you gotta punch people in the face. Like that one guy that was my manager at McDonald's and they just went over there and beat the hell out of the, the girl working there because she didn't take out the trash. That actually happened. <laughs> that's not what you're supposed to do. You don't hit the people. You just hit them with your words. So that's all I have today. I hope you enjoyed all these terrible ass stories. If you want to send me one, follow me on Twitter and Instagram and message me on there. It's a good damn time. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, doodle, like it, and subscribe. And until next time, make sure you do me a favor. Get on it. Doggone it. Bye. Yeah, it's like 1994 in here because this is just like a card reader. Why do I even, I even need that?